James and Laura from Methley. How does it feel for me? July 2023. What health professionals have you and James had contact with since our last update? So he's had quite a few different contacts with different people. Um, so he's had two inpatient stays at Leeds General Infirmary, one for a jaw operation and the other one to have his jaw stretched. So during that time, he's been seen by the nurses, by the anaesthetic team, um, and then also by the jaw surgeon and the team around him as well. And then he's also been into our local hospital um, in Wakefield for um, three doses of IV steroids to, to to um, uh, um, try and improve his seizures. Can you tell us about James's jaw operation? The jaw operation was to try and do it so that he could open his mouth big enough so that he can be orally ventilated. You get like a telephone call about four or five days beforehand you, so that you can have like a pre-op so you can find out how he's been, his weight, his um, weight medication and the lady that phoned this time was brilliant. She was really good. She really answered questions that I had. She was really sort of informative. Um, and then on the day of us going in for the op, it was a really warm day. And when we went into this surgical waiting lounge, it was absolutely boiling. When you walked into the room, it was, you could sort of feel being hit by this heat. And James were the first one down, so we didn't have to wait too long in that room. And then, they had filled in the wrong form. They thought that we were just a day case, but actually it was meant to be an overnight case. So there was a bit of a faff around trying to find a bed for him afterwards. So the actual sort of procedure that they did, the op that they did went well. Um, then he had his jaw stretched again a month after that because his jaws reduced again. So when we were on the pre-op surgical ward before we went down, they were, you know, they were really good of us. They provide you with tea and coffee and make sure that, you, you know, the kind of parents that are there are refreshed and ready to go. Um, and they also provide things for the children to play with as well and keep you updated as to how long it's going to be and things like that. Um, so that ward was really good. That was the pre-op assessment ward. So um, that was ward 49. And then afterwards, he then went to Ward 51 because that's where they found him a bed. But because we didn't know which ward he were going to after, I couldn't order him a blended meal. So then when we got to the ward, they said it was too late for us to order a blended meal. So I had to um, just go and look at what they had left um, and then try and make it so that it was thin enough to go down the tube. So we ended up just having... Um, a, couple of, um, a couple of syringes of custard because that were the only thing that were thin enough to go down. So we um, have also been on other wards and we've had the same issue where if you don't order the blended meal in time, then you are just sort of offered like baby food or yoghurt. And if it's for a, a long stay, that's not really appropriate for, you know, for him to build his energy up again and be ready to go home. Did you feel James's care was well coordinated? So over this past month or so, James has had input from three different teams, um, Leeds, Wakefield and um, Sheffield as well. Um, so he's had three doses of IV steroids at Wakefield, which um, um, they reduce his immune system. So when he's then been sort of admitted to Leeds, I have asked for, for him to have a side room so that he isn't mixing with other children that are in for lots of different reasons. And the times that I've asked for that, it hasn't been sorted when we've got there and we've then just been put on a bay with the other children. I've been trying to get Wakefield and Sheffield to decide between them which one is going to do James's repeat EEG to measure his brain um, activity in August. Um, to find out whether the steroids have worked, but I am struggling to try and get an answer back from either of them as to which team is going to do it. If you could have changed one thing to make your experience better this month, what would it be? One thing that would make James's care a lot, you know, a lot sort of smoother is if people say that they are going to do something or they're going to put a request into somewhere or, a, you know, a referral, then it's done. Then they'd let 
Mino, who I need to then chase up and try and get appointments with because um, it is really, really frustrating if people say they're going to do something and it takes months and months for that to get done. James's jaw surgeon um, said after um, he'd had his jaw stretch that he wanted to do it again in four to six weeks and I phoned up the scheduling team two weeks after to see whether they'd got a date and they hadn't received the booking form. So I phoned James's jaw surgeon and asked if he'd done the form and he said yes, he'd done it. But then it was my job to then go back to the scheduling team to say he's done it. So yeah, just sort of being like the middleman between them isn't what I should be doing. What things about James's care did you really value this month? Over this past, Two months, James had lots and lots of cannulas and lots of procedures and things that are really scary and painful at times. So that we've really, really valued the input of the play team so that when the nurses and the doctors are doing the cannulas and things that are really sort of distressing to children, they use their skills then to try and make it more of a pleasurable experience and something that he doesn't need to be scared of by using an iPad to distract or letting him choose some toys from the playroom and bringing them back up to his room so he can play with them whilst they're doing the cannula or whatever it is that they need to do. Thank you to Laura for sharing her and James's story. Produced by Healthwatch Leeds in collaboration with Ro Lara.